Skyrim and mods basically became as synonyms during the last years. There are over 100,000 mods available for Skyrim, so it's easy to get lost. This video features 20 best mods which are actual for 2022 to drastically improve Skyrim, yet only such mods which will be useful to anyone no matter what. For instance, there are survival mods, which may be essential for some players but tedious and boring to others, or some combat mods, which may be cool but making game too hard, etc. This video shows only the most qualitative mods which can be easily called essentials for any personal taste PC specs and walkthrough. Let's take a look. With Skyrim being around for so long and many players exploring it for nearly a decade, you all most likely played through the starting intro to the state is just boring. The alternate start type of mods is a great alternative, which will give you almost limitless options to not just skip the intro, but to make a perfect roleplaying start for character you want. The most popular one is the Live Another Life mod, which focuses on unique starting situations, locations and starting gear for your character. Do you want to start as a Dawnstar Sailor, Sieve's Guild member, Tavern Patron or Civil War recruit, Vigilant of Standar or Hunter, Vampire or Necromancer, Secret Agent or maybe a Shipwrecked Passenger? It's all in your hands. There are also two alternative mods linked in the video description, where one focuses on extremely deep character customization in terms of unique bonuses and traits and has a unique starting location, and the second one focusing on ability to play not a dragonborn kind of character, which is surprisingly interesting. Diverse, replayable and fun character builds are a must-have for a game like Skyrim, improved in new perks, new spells, immersive racial and other abilities, and even a brand new powers and power gaming quest lines you can progress through to build your character in most unique and potent way possible for any build archetype. First come the perks. Vanilla Skyrim perk system was not terrible, but not any great either, and it did not allow any kind of hybrid or truly unique character builds. With the incredible Ordinator mod, not only many perks are balanced and improved, but the amount of perks is now effectively doubled. So you can choose from over 450 perks, allowing virtually limitless amount of actually viable character builds. A pacifist bard, an art monk, drunken style alchemist warrior, necromancer with legions of summons, a dream sieve and a lord of nightmares, dreamer mechanisms master, vengeful paladin, elemental archer or a vampire knight, it's all possible now. The next slot are actually three mods, but they work just fine together. You may get only one, two or all three if you want that, depending on how many new spells you want. With all three installed, your arsenal will be expanded by over 350 new spells. As for the mods themselves, Odin adds decent amount of new spells, but also fixes and improves most of vanilla spells as well, so it is the best choice for a kind of vanilla plus mod setup. Arcanum is a huge spell pack with over 200 new spells, which also focuses on unique mechanics, spell combinations and incredibly epic visuals. Both of those also restore and add cut spells and magic from previous Elder Scrolls games. The last one, Triumvirate, focuses deeply on roleplay, adding specific deeply thematic spells fitting various character archetypes – Warlock, Druid, Shadow Mage, Cleric and Shaman. Conjuration, Restoration, Destruction, Alteration and Illusion. Every magic school is now improved and tremendously expanded. Also, as all these mods are really complex and just massive, if you want to know more about each one in details, you can watch a dedicated reviews of them on my channel, link down below. Vanilla racial and standing stones bonuses and abilities were pretty flat and often just becoming close to useless in late game. And most importantly, they were not unique enough, not standing out between each other. The Imperious mod overhauls racial abilities, powers and stats, giving each race three new racial abilities and a quest to unlock their new ultimate racial power. The bonuses and abilities are not just unique and useful at any level, but also made lore-friendly and logically fit in every race. Bosmers can tame wild beasts and scout their prey, Argonians have tremendous regenerative abilities and can speed caustic poisons, orcs have incredible warrior bonuses and can even cause shockwaves in combat, and so on. 
To keep the mod fair and balanced, NPCs can use some of those abilities too in combat, and many options are toggleable in the mod configuration menu. The Andromeda mod replaces the mundane vanilla standing stone effects with two new abilities per stone by default. It also rewards you for the exploration, because upon discovering all the standing stones, each of them also grants the third one, a unique ultimate active power which can easily turn the tables of the battle instantly. For instance, the Star of the West power of Warrior Stone basically can give you a second life when your health and stamina are almost depleted. The Mage Stone ultimate power will double the strength of a chosen spell school magic while halving the magical cost. Other stones can be even more situative and interesting in their practical usage, allowing you to unlock truly unique character builds. The Winter Sun mod adds immersive and practically useful worshipping system. Pray, worship at shrines and follow the tenets of your deity to strengthen your bond with the deity and eventually get rewarded with unspeakable divine strengths. In addition to the Divines and Daedric Princess, the mod adds many other deities from the Elder Scrolls lore with their own shrines and highly unique and incredibly strong powers. For instance, following the RK, great for Paladin build, you will get max health boost and a regeneration bonus, but not just a regeneration. Yet it is the higher, the lower your health is. The ultimate power of RK basically gives you a second life, bringing you back from a fatal wound when your health reaches zero. The ultimate power will cost you part of your phase bonus, and the phase bonus you can gain by performing certain actions fitting your deity tenets. For RK, that would be performing last rites on the dead bodies. On the other hand, a devotee of cities will not just have increased sneak damage and decreased protection by enemies, but can even tear open the space itself, turning a door in a void portal which will instantly pull inside and kill an enemy nearby, but in return you must actually slay your victims en masse. Winter Sun provides not just useful, but often simply epic, innovative abilities. Vampire gameplay was pretty cool even in vanilla game, but at the same time, after some gameplay time as a vampire, it was noticeable that this aspect was still heavily unfinished, its true potential not opened. The Sacrosanct mod changes just that. This mod is so game-changing that after playing vampire just a bit with it, you will sink lots of time into vampire gameplay even if you didn't like it before at all. Over 30 new perks, which also give bonuses to both vampire lord and human forms, dozens of new abilities, custom blood magic system and even different vampiric abilities per race. It also adds a new questline to unlock even more vampiric abilities, vampire rank progression system and just so much more. The last touch to improve your character is to polish shouts. Many vanilla shouts were just a joke compared to most of spells, some other were just not working properly, etc. The Dragonborn Ascendant mod fixes and improves vanilla shouts, turning them into a fearsome instrument of destruction, on pair with most dangerous spells allowing you to improve character builds even further. Secondly, it adds a rewarding system, which actually motivates you to hunt the dragons. In Vanilla, Dragon Souls had no use aside from unlocking the shouts, which she was doing pretty fast. Now, the more dragons you kill, the faster your shouts cooldown will be, allowing you to use shouts even more often. There are many combat mods available for Skyrim, but most of them are quite specific in feature sets, some can make game too hard for certain players and so on. One mod which can be called essential to improve combat without making it too hard is Wildcat. It makes combat more challenging without going over the top. Adding lightweight injury system and contact sensitive stagger, making enemies less stupid and combat AI in general more responsive and aggressive. It also adds whereas other features for the player to dominate the enemies, time blocks, attacks of opportunity, backstabs and more. Most importantly, every single feature is configurable and toggleable in MCL, so you can adjust the difficulty completely up to your likings. 
The Ultimate Dodge Mod stands for its name. It allows player to dodge not just in all four directions, but also diagonally as per your movement. It also has configurable hotkey and stamina cost, as well as an option to allow enemies attempt to dodge your hits as well. You can adjust the enemy's dodge frequency in MCM or just disable it completely and keep it only for yourself. It is simple, but a combat-changing mod which makes fighting much more fun and tactical. When it comes to new armors, weapons and improved artifacts, here are three mods which you can never go wrong with. For armors, take Immersive Armors. This mod adds over 50 new armor sets and hundreds of smaller standalone parts like shields or helmets to the game. It also distributes them to the leveled lists, which means you can not just craft them, but also find them in dungeon chests, buy them from traders and NPCs, will also wear them from time to time, adding to visual diversity of the game. There is also a realistic retexture add-on, which changes the look of those armor sets in a mod which may look not lore friendly or just too outdated. I will show it now too. For the weapons, there is no better option than animated armory. It adds brand new weapon types to the game with realistic lore-friendly models. Those weapons are pikes, halberds, quarterstaves, rapiers, and even claws and whips. What's the best about this mod though is it also adds brand new animations and idols for all these weapons, so halberds will act like halberds and not just battle axes with a different model. Whips will have animated lashing strikes and so on. This mod also adds items to the leveled lists, so you will see enemies using new weapons too, as well as be able to find and buy them. Skyrim has simply huge amount of various special armors and weapons, or in other words, artifacts, and hunting them is one of the game's best parts which makes it so interesting. At the same time, most of artifacts don't actually have any special effects and abilities, often having just boring static effects like fire damage, frost damage, and so on. And on the high levels, they are usually worse than self-enchanted Daedric or Dragonborn weapons and armors. Reliquary of Myth overhauls over 60 artifacts in the game. Daedric, Adric and Ethereal artifacts, Dragon Priest masks, unique armor sets like Archmage, Nightingale or Mirak set, and over 30 other miscellaneous artifacts you can find throughout the game. Yet, this mod is the best artifact overhaul ever, not just because of the amount of items it covers, but because every artifact it makes not just stronger, but useful at any stage of the game and actually unique like no others. For instance, aside from general improvements of stats, the Dawnbreaker now makes Undead explode with Holy Light. Ethereal Crown allows you to have two standing stone effects. The Mace of Moloch Baal is now chargeable by the souls of the slain victims, draining 15 points of magicka and stamina attention per soul collected. Volendrunk can send enemies flying. The Oreo Shield charges itself from a blocked attacks to then release a powerful aerial explosion when bashing. Blade of Woe grants you a short invisibility clock if you want shot the enemy. Canaric Mask has a chance to heal you when being hit and summon a powerful Dragon Priest ally, and so on and so forth. This mod alone can make you replay Skyrim to find all the incredible artifacts and try them in action. Note about the installation. Install this mod the very last after all other mods in this list, as it has patches for some of them. Dynamic Animation Replacer 
Orja Star made a revolution in animation modding for Skyrim. Contrary to, let's say, classic animation mods, which modify existing files, which results in compatibility issues and many limitations in general, DAR basically allows to assign a limited amount of animations with custom conditions with near to zero compatibility issues. Additionally, mods based on DAR, in of course not all, but many cases, just work as is and do not require networks like Nemesis or Fnis, and in most of cases they do not affect performance at all. If you'll just look on like 20 most popular animation mods released in last 18 months or so, at least 15 of them will require DAR. The DAR-based mods allow you to have almost infinite animations and idols freedom, and not just by improving existing animations or adding variety to them, but also adding brand new animations and idols which simply didn't exist before, boosting the immersion to brand new levels. For instance, EVG Conditional Idols mod allows your character to play various immersive idols based on conditions – cold, rain, injury, fatigue and so on. Immersive Interactions, as its name implies, animates around 30 different action types which never had animation at all before. Looting, petting dogs, cats and horses, picking locks, stealing, saluting jarls and touching standing stones, hugging friends and spouses, practicing on training dummies, putting out fires and filling the bottles from kegs. The list of incredible mods based on Dar as for today is just huge. Conditional facial expressions of your character, incredible first-person combat animations overhaul, one of the best mods of 2021, Underdog, which adds variations to movement and attack animations based on different factors, your perks, armor type and more. Tomb, fully animated shouts, is giving unique shouting animation to every shout in the game. Dynamic swimming mod gives variation to swimming animations based on armor type and stamina level. The list can be continued for dozens of minutes to be honest, so just get dar, then open the animation section of my modding guide and go as wild as you want. Creatures, NPCs and enemies. This part of the game clearly deserves a special attention as you can't just explore Skyrim for a few minutes without getting your butt into the fight, be it a bandit fort, forest, dragon combat or a dungeon full of undead. So let's improve and expand the creatures part of the game logically and drastically, but without making it tedious at the same time. The Skyrim Immersive Creatures mod adds several dozens of brand new creature types from Elder Scrolls lore, with over 150 subtypes from that and resulting in several thousand creatures carefully placed around the game world, including the DLC content. At the same time, most of creatures and their spawn points are placed really carefully, only where and when it makes sense. Velvas and Minotaurs, Darzogs and Ogrims, Winged Twilights and Seducers, different deity creatures, Goblins, Dramans, Drogues, or Guardians and many others. Additionally, mod also greatly expands the overall variety and adds new types to existing vanilla enemies. You can see a large variety of skeletons, different by their look and even race, including beast race skeletons. There are new types of Drogurs, Shades, Giants, Dreamer, Automata, Chorus, Wolves and Trolls, Spriggans and Dremoras. You can see Civil War, Horse Patrols, Goblin Tribes fighting each other and so much more. When fighting bosses affected or added by the mod, you can also find new unique loot. Lastly, mod provides the utmost detailed mod configuration menu where you can choose presets, enable or disable certain creatures, which may be not quite law friendly or just too hard for you, change their AI, stats and so on. Skyrim Immersive Creatures is an essential base to expand Skyrim creature diversity. Dragons are the core part of Skyrim lore and gameplay. There are several mods to improve their AI and stats, but this is an arbitrary thing to do. Diverse Dragons Collection mod focuses exactly and only on adding new dragon types themselves. It adds 28 new dragons, each one not only with a unique model and texture, but also unique abilities with unique visuals. In total, there are 16 new breeze attacks and 19 new abilities used by the dragons. Every dragon type comes with 7 rounds 
ranks of strength, depending on your level, and they are all integrated into vanilla level lists to appear in your game seamlessly. Mod also has an MCM, where you can disable any of the dragons in case you will not like some of them personally. Lastly, but also importantly, it is compatible with every other creature mod and all kind of dragon mods which affect stats or AI. Bandits are the most common enemy type in Skyrim, but also incredibly poor in terms of variety, AI and just how fun it is to encounter them. The organized bandits in Skyrim or just Obis is the best bandit overhaul, which features over 50 new bandit types that will make every encounter diverse, fun and tactical, divided into 7 tiers of strengths, from bandit wannabes to a deadly bandit lords. There are now over 2500 changed or added bandits in the game world, but at the same time placed carefully by hand only in places where this makes sense. So you worry not, you will not just meet like 20 bandits in some 10 square feet tower or in a place which never had bandits to begin with, everything is as logical as it should be. Each bandit may be varied by combat preference, strengths, rank, gender, etc., which results in over 300 different titles. Bandit's variety is simply tremendous with Obis. Not only warrior, archer and mage types now have many new subtypes and specializations, but there are brand new bandit types like rogue and assassin bandits who can backstab you from invisibility, furious unarmored berserkers and armor-clad bandit reavers, bandits which specialize in poisons and diseases, armor breaking and clock spells, druids and bone lords, civil war deserters and thieves, hexes and cabalists, and even rare encounters like bandit which were cursed by the Hersin or bandit ghosts. Every bandit gang also has a distinct appearance and skill set of abilities, as well as improved AI. Bandits now also can roam the lands and can even perform actual raids on cities. This feature is optional though. With Obis installed, you will play and feel through the game as your first time again. That's how much fun it is. While we have improved variety of existing creatures and added lots of new ones, their AI is still blatantly dumb and there are still things to improve. Sky Test Realistic animals and predators is the best mod for this aspect. First of all, it makes wild animals actually behave like animals. Wolves, for instance, will have pack instincts, being more aggressive in numbers but more cowardly when only one or two of them left. Some animals will be also afraid of fire, so if you don't want to fight that wolf's pack right now, you can simply scare them off with a torch. Some other not directly combat but rather immersive AI is added. Bears, for instance, can hibernate depending on the season, will be more active at corresponding daytime and so on. Skytest also adds new creatures variety and neutral creatures to the game. You will notice bear or mammoth caps with their mothers, ducks and swans, puppies inside the cities and so on. Extended Encounters mod is the most immersive and configurable mod of such kind, which works perfectly to spice up often boring world of Skyrim wilderness and settlements. There are plenty of other encounter type of mods, but there are mostly pretty subjective, sometimes can make encounters epic but pretty rational, etc. Extended Encounters has simply said three main features. First of all, there are world encounters, which consists of just regular dynamic encounters, which include creatures, bandits and dragons. Second one is location encounters, which consists of two unique parts. The first is a combat one, which features bandit raids on cities, civil war camp raids and guard raids on bandit forts. Second one is a non-combat and features neutral encounters inside the settlements, public executions, travelers resting inside the taverns and temples, thieves robbing houses and trying to get away with this and so on. You can also spot mercenaries outside the cities doing jobs. The last one is a situation of encounters, which is also a special feature that has a chance to encounter enemies when sleeping in wilderness or fast traveling. The best part of the mod though is that you can toggle absolutely every feature and adjust it to your likings, which makes extended encounters a perfect mod for both rewarding world exploration and non-combat immersion.
You look haunted somehow. As though you've seen something terrible. Tell me, please. What did you see? Uh, a dragon? You saw an actual living dragon? But that's impossible, surely? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to question your reliability. If you say you saw a dragon, then who am I to doubt you? But don't you think if a dragon destroyed Helgen, that the people nearby should be warned? Isn't there a village right on its doorstep? I'm thinking about how we will die once whatever evil here hears us talking. No, it's not that. I mean, it's just that if you were the only one talking with me, and I thought three were... There, there were three of you. This is Sadly, an that, that means... The that I don't have three more ale mugs to drink! Some people like to play with followers, some don't, for various reasons. Either they're making game too easy, vanilla followers being just a boring pack mules, you name it. Yet with the follower mods listed here, you will not be able to resist to travel in company even if you hated followers before. There are similar followers I can personally recommend as ones you cannot go wrong with. Lucien, Inigo, Skiver, Sophia and Vilja. Each of them has different personality and backstory, but what unites them all is the incredibly well-written character with thousands of voice lines. These followers not just talk in generic lines, they communicate like a real person. They answer to your questions and ask own in return, share backstories and commentaries about locations, quests and your actions, sometimes even interact between each other and vanilla followers. Whatever one you'll pick here, or maybe all of them, you never know, it will make your gameplay incredibly more fun and satisfying. That's all for now folks, I hope this video was entertaining and useful to you, and you picked some mods for your own game. Remember that you can always look for more incredible mods in my modding guide, which is linked down below in the video description, together with the links to all mods showed in this video. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch. Stay tuned, stay healthy and stay happy. Simitar Gaming here, signing out.